can see There's a picture there of you next to me Man, I burned that shit and left it in the street Cause it's how I used to be We were a wildfire dancing Ladies and gentlemen, oh. <laughs> the excitement is in the air. Wake up the children, wake up the neighbors. Oh, gosh, how are you, sir? Because we are here with Matt Cassiel talking about his, his debut album coming up in April. It's what a moment, Matt. Unbelievable mm. that we're here, how, brother. Oh, man, how have you been? Man, being great, being great. I mean, dude, yeah. one of the most powerful voices in Nashville and one of the coolest cats as well. Can't wait for the world to uh, get exposed to wild, to wild horses, man. You're being you're being very generous, and I appreciate it. Nah, man. By the way, you you, you make looking cool like so easy, man. I gotta tell uh, you, every time I see you, you just ready a cool vibes. Like, let me ask oh, you this: man. like, I'm not a hat person. You always rock okay. the cool hats. Like, it's part of you your, know, your trademark, man. I, I feel like there's a there's a lot of things about getting older that hats are are needed for, and uh, you know, and but I've always just been I've always loved hats. And, yeah. uh, and I always try to find good ones. This has been my, if you can, I don't know if you could read this one backwards. The, the audio audience says, Raise Hell, Praise Dale. That's it. Raise Hell, okay. Praise Dale. <laughs> it was a really good Instagram buy. It was one of those that the, like the Instagram ad came up and I was like, man, I need that one. So man. the hat collection is pretty, pretty extensive. It's great. It's great. And mm. you're like, you know, in these venues, like in Nashville, they might be sold out, but you're a tall guy and you have the hat and it's like, oh, okay, yeah. there's Matt, there's the point of reference. That's <laughs> where the cool people are immediately. I'm not lost, you know? I'm like the big flag on the back of the shopping cart. So you don't lose your parents, you know, exactly. I'm, I'm that guy. <laughs> exactly. You think oh, I should man. start incorporating the hat into the shows? What do you think, Matt? Not so much, right? Yeah, I know you could, man. <laughs> we, and we can get you a sponsorship with Stetson and see how this goes. I think this would be pretty awesome. Like, uh, it would be different colored hats. Like, you'd have, I just saw my name in the background. Oh, that's so awesome. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, we could start, in, like, incorporating, uh, like, different colored hats based on the light color of the, and I don't know where I'm pointing on the screen, but of the lightning bolt. So, you're if you had kind. a different color, if you had turned it a different color, we can get you a different hat for each one. You're, you're too kind, Matt, but I think Stetson would go out of business in six months. But I appreciate, <laughs> but I appreciate the, 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 the compliments there. And, uh, man, let's, yeah. let, let's start with, I mean, we've talked this uh, informally about it, but you're from New Jersey. You're from Linden. Yeah. Yep. You know, blue-collar, blue working-class town. And, yeah. you know, some of our favorite musicians, you included, and mm. right here in Nashville, drummer Sarah Tomic of, of Them Bives and stuff, yeah. they come from Jersey, and they, there's this yeah. certain pizzazz. Uh, mm. you know to, to the rock music from jersey yeah. what is it about jersey uh, that, that brings that that like grit uh, to the good music now? i think a lot of it has to deal with uh, the realness of the people right i mean we all kind of grew up listening to certain things like i grew up we all had the the jersey shore influence of bruce springsteen and Southside johnny and the asbury jukes you had like this mix of rock and roll and big band horn thing um, but you had songwriters like Bruce Springsteen that would bring these, you know, electric lyrics and, and sometimes just acoustic guitar songs to you. And you go, OK, this is cool. And I find that's that's what I get a lot of when I when I'm in the country world here is that. Every writer I know, they go, man, I love Bruce. And I'm like, yeah. And for every other reason, I think just the like you, you said it, you said it kind of the pizzazz, but there's a grit to people up there that is very um, you can't fake it. 
Mm. And we all, when we do things, we do it with our whole heart. So, you know, for drummers or singing or working, whatever it is, everybody does things to the, to the best degree that they can. And they're, you know, we, we just come from good working people. That's about yeah. it. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Love it, Matt. And, you know, I think, you know, you've talked about this before, but, you know, musical, mo- there's been plenty of musical moments that shaped you. But the one that mm. we keep coming back is, is Elvis, right? And how he kind of oh, like yeah. rocked you, like when you were like a small child there, man. Yeah, what was yeah. it about Elvis that like, you know, you were three years old and just like shook you forever? It's funny. I saw the, um, they're coming out with the new movie. I don't know if you saw the trailer for it, but there's an I Elvis movie. Yeah. There's an Elvis movie coming out and it's been something that I've heard about. And I'm so excited. But when I was a kid, um, I remember seeing a, I think my, it was either something on television or something like that. And I saw Elvis for the first time and I was probably three. And I looked at the television. I said, that's what I want to do. I want to be that guy. And I mean, he was just this large in life character. Sure. And as I got older, I remember I had a videotape, uh, VHS tape of uh, a tour of Graceland from Priscilla Presley. And I wore that tape out till it wouldn't play anymore. And every Christmas there would be gifts and I would have, it was like Elvis ties. And I just, I was just infatuated with this guy and his music. And, and um, I was Elvis for, for Halloween in third grade. My aunt sewed me a white jumpsuit with a cape and oh, rhinestones perfect. and they sprayed my hair black out a little guitar. Perfect. It's the idea of this guy being this voice of just cool always to me was like, man, I, I want to figure out how to do that. And you realize how many people he inspired in terms of music. You know, they always say like, you wouldn't have the Beatles if you didn't have Elvis or stuff like that. But man, he was just, he was the one thing that didn't give me an option B in life. Like I wanted to do this because of him. And I said, well, if there's no other way to do it, then that's the only thing I want to do. Hmm. Yeah. Phenomenal. And that's it. Yeah. And your destiny was settled. And, you know, you start chipping at your oh, art yeah. form. You start chipping at your at your things, man, slowly. But, yeah. you know, but I want to reach this point, like, because you had not really, like, sang professionally. I mean, you sang in your house when no one was mm-hmm. home. But but, yeah. but when you're but when you're 14, you're like you're in middle school and there's a, mm-hmm. your, your music teacher encourages you to go to that mm-hmm. open mic night right at the local coffee yeah. shop. What yeah. was that moment like? man? Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I had always played guitar for people. I played in these little bands when I was a kid. And then I was 14 and her name is Kristen Lorenzetti. Uh, now thank, she thank is. You, Miss a, yeah. Miss, Miss Lorenzetti. She is, uh, she was uh, my choir teacher and she said, Hey, there's this little coffee shop. And I was sitting there playing guitar in our choir room one day. Just, I think I was singing like a, a nickel Creek song or something like that. And she said, Hey, I want you to try this out. It's a little coffee shop. You should go in. They do an open mic. Um, And it's a place called Van Gogh's Ear in Union, New Jersey. I'm still very good friends with all the owners, a lot of people that work there. And um, and I went in, I did this. I think I just played like two John Mayer covers and maybe some song that I wrote that sounded like a John Mayer song. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was just the influence of the time. And they were like, hey, we want you to come back in two weeks and play us play a set for us. And I'm 14 years old and I'm like, I've never played more than. 10 minutes worth of songs in my life and they want me to come in for an hour and hey we're gonna pay you 50 bucks and at the time i was like it's my first bang gig it's 50 bucks yeah it's 50 bucks and i'm gonna get to play songs for an hour for people and that's almost as much as some people get in some of these i know (laughs) it's it's as much as you get downtown nashville that's about it and i was doing it from home but yeah it was it was really interesting to see people's reaction to me playing guitar me singing and i it was it's that thing it's that drug it's that uh, it's that thing that you want to feel that make you want to do it more. And once that happened, I was like, cool, I'm just going to continue to do this. And it was, there was no other thought in my head. I was like, man, I just love doing this. And you just, yeah, it was, uh, I was always grateful for that day. And she knows it. I, you know, we talk about it every once in a while, we'll reconnect. And I always mention her in most interviews and stuff like that. I said, she was the one that actually had me play my very first show. Um, and it was awesome. They knew you had it, man. They knew. And yeah. one, of the th- one of the great things about seeing you perform live is, you know, you're not like slash, like shredding solos there, shaking your head <laughs> off. You know what I mean? Like going bananas in a way, yeah. like you're like really exquisite. I love just the way that you like mm. ride the notes. Like you just like close your eyes, half, half, like you're like in every note. And like yeah. you make us like appreciate like your guitar playing. It's a beautiful thing, man. But thank you. But that's not a question that, that, that just came to my mind. I was, I was thinking about that. Um, I but yeah, that. L- l- let me ask you about uh, mm-hmm. Good Man Down uh, because uh, we, got a, we, got, we got a copy of that. And uh, man, really How? good stuff. We got How did you get that? 
2010, really great album. We'll, maybe we'll play a little bit here when we edit well, it out. No, but... I, don't, I don't think we'll to, <laughs> but I appreciate you thinking about it. Wow. Oh, oh, man. That was not what I expected on this phone call. But Matt, oh, man, yeah. wow. you, could, you could hear the seeds of who you're becoming today, man. Like, and, oh, and I guess that's the question. Maybe you've answered it already. But like, are you like, when you listen to this, is it like reading mm -hmm. an old diary where you're like a little cringy? <laughs> or is it like oh, yeah. out of, yeah. <laughs> I just got uh, fairly embarrassed all in one section of you saying that title of that album. Uh, no, it is. It's, it's like reading old diaries. I think that's what I made that record. I was, I just figured out how to record. I think I was 19, something like that, which is the shame of it. Me at 19, I'm watching kids who are 19 now who are making pro records. And I'm going, man, I, if I only knew how to do this at 19 years old, but I was, at my parents' house, staying up until three, four o'clock in the morning. I had figured out that Dunkin' Donuts had extra large coffee cups at that point in my life. That's what you And mean. I was just sitting up. I recorded the drums in my buddy's basement. I did all the guitars and I had written these songs. We had played them at different bars. Even at, you know, 18, 19 years old, we were playing bars of just like local friends and family who owned bars and we would go in and play them. And I had a group of friends that would travel around with me and you know, we'd go to Stone Pony in Asbury Park. We'd play, uh, there was a place called the Stanley Cup in Linden, uh, a place called Crossroads in Garwood, Butch Coles. I mean, Butch Coles was a little later, but, um, you know, it was, it was fun learning that craft. And I tell people 80% of the shows I've ever played in my life were before I moved to Nashville. Mm. You know, a lot of that cutting the teeth, putting yeah. in the 10,000 hours was these bars and these clubs and playing in New York and, you know, Hey, we're going to have you play at nine, but you get there and you really play at one o'clock in the morning or something like that. I mean, it was a lot of that. Sure. And I was talking, I was talking to a friend the other night and he, a guy who used to sing for me, my, my friend Tracy, and he had said, uh, he's like, man, I remember those days. I mean, he works in, in banking now and all my friends have, you know, these nine to fives that they, they love their life. And, and, but they all have these great memories of just going, man, we, we hustled and we had a lot of fun. And yeah. you're, you're still, you're still the one that does that, that will do it. So, uh, but that record is like, I haven't listened to it in a long time. I don't know how you got a copy of it. I'm very impressed. <laughs> it was probably like, uh, not bands in town or something like that. Like some, well, I think there's, it's up on some website somewhere. I'm it's impressed. Up, it, it, it's up somewhere in the, in the internet, you know, it's, it, it's there. <laughs> you uh, got to tell me where, so I can quickly take that down. <laughs> so I can delete it. Oh my God. That I love cracks it. me up. I did not expect that, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it is, it's like going into an old diary, you know, you yeah. kind of cringe, but you realize where you're from and you realize the thing that you started doing is the thing that you're still doing. So that that's that's really cool, and I'm I'm glad you found that, and that just yeah. that no, that warms my it. heart a little bit. Love it because we love you, so we like to see like the, oh, the whole you. journey, man. And I want to ask about a few of the new songs in just a second, but let me ask Please. you really quickly about like uh, a, a few. I mean, you're so good at covers, but there's one that seems to just shine above the others: the country roads, right? The the John Denver country oh, song. I mean, yeah. almost heaven, West Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountains, oh Shenandoah River Life is old there, older than the tree Country road, take me home to a place I belong, West Virginia yeah, well, you have a ton you have a ton of great ones but this specific yeah. one you've yeah. just created magic with this like there's people right. who've like done their first dance to yours to your version yeah. and there's video of that uh also like just carrying the comments on youtube i mean there's people mm -hmm. that say that like their family members passed and they were looking for a song and mm -hmm. like they were kind of like praying for something and then they found you i mean mm -hmm. just like really man like real and human connection human core emotions yeah. here what's that feeling like for you matt when you when you get stuff like this um you know i remember doing that video it was in my that was in my parents living room and it was at a time where i had a manager uh, i had a guy who was helping me and my manager and he said hey you need to do youtube covers so i tried to make them as fun and as interesting at the time that i could it was just me i had a camera on a stand and you know, I'd heard that song and I was learning how to play dobro and I was listening to this band called Infamous String Dusters a bunch and Andy Hall's a dobro player. 
And I said, what if I did this song and I just played it on the Dobro? This would be kind of cool. Um, I did it, I put it out and it was interesting to see the reaction of people and people who watch it and they bring it up. I'm always like, you saw me a couple of pounds ago without a beard, you know, it's like, it's like, it's another like going back into the vault. But I remember seeing friends send me videos of DJs who were using it for weddings. I saw the comments on YouTube and it's really, it's interesting. It's like, I think that's one of the greatest things about covers. You know, when you think of Hallelujah from Jeff Buckley, who had Jeff Buckley who's always been one of my favorites. Some would say that his version is better than the original. I just think it was his best interpretation of, of words that hit him. And that's sure. what I always, I always try to find with cool covers is it's one thing to just play the song like it's the song, but if you play it like it's yours, you know, it, it gives another sense of um, resonance, you know? And I think that's what happened with that song for me was that I, I, I played it and I saw what people were feeling. It was just really cool. It was, I didn't yeah. think that the song on YouTube of me singing a John Denver song would ever, you know, spark people to have some emotion to it that, that maybe they hadn't heard before, but I wanted to play it in a way that gave me an emotion when I heard it, like myself. There's, I always feel like there's a sense of being impressed with yourself that we should all have as musicians. Like there's just time you have to give yourself a little pat on the back. Oh, sure. And that was one of those. I said, you know, I want to be able to play this and make it my own. And when I did, I said, man, this makes me feel something. And it was really fun to, to see people's reaction to it. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Matt, you have you have this thing. You're able to just, I don't know, sonically be <laughs> empathetic, empathize. Like, you know, you've collaborated mm -hmm. with, you know, John Paul White and, of course, our friend Brie Kennedy and Jimmy Allen mm -hmm. and Joy Oladokun yeah. and the whole nine yards. And mm -hmm. you always, you know, it's not just a Nashville collaboration that sometimes you can hear is like transactional. You know, yeah. it's like there's always like when you put your, your, your fingerprints in it, you empathize mm -hmm. with the singer songwriter. It's like you connect to the emotion. Yeah. So how do you do that, Matt? Like, how are you able to be, uh, you know, emotional intelligence, but creating into music? It's amazing what you do. Oh, man, thank you. I've, you know, it's funny, like all the, the collaborators, Bree, specifically, Joy, John, um, Jimmy, and then a lot of the people that I get to write with that I really, I, I, somebody once told me, they're like, you're like our, our, uh, our song therapist. And I laughed and I said, it's, it's because I talk a lot and I ask a lot of questions. But for me, I don't know, I, I think growing up and having certain songs that really resonated with me, you know, uh, my father was really good at having songs that kind of hit the mark. He was sure. a big James Taylor fan and as a kid, I didn't really understand James Taylor until I got to about 14, 15 years old. And I started feeling what words were. And I never try to lose sight of that. One of my best, I think one of my greatest references for that feeling of music was when I would get to the end of um, Stormfront from Billy Joel and you get mm. to, and so it goes. Perfect. And so it goes to me is probably one of the most heart wrenching songs. And that feeling I had when I heard it, I'd never been through the moment, but I felt what that feels like. And I always remind myself, how do I create that musical moment and, and have the, the power of the word coincide with the music. So, I mean, people always ask, you know, what comes first music melody, But when you're sitting with somebody and you start asking questions and I'll always ask permission, you know, can I ask you this? Is this okay? Are you okay writing about this? Or mm -hmm. even if it's for myself, sometimes I have to ask myself permission, which is a real tough question because when you get into things that you don't want to, you have to allow yourself to do it. And it's almost like tricking your mind, like, Hey, are you cool talking about this right now? And, yeah. um, and when you get past that barrier mm -hmm. and then you can let those real words start to come out, Um, it's for me, I just always want that feeling to happen. Every song, I want there to be that guttural punch. And one thing that Brie in particular, I've said this to her, I, and I've said it in other writing sessions. I said, listen, man, I'm in the business of hurting people. And if we're not making people feel things, then I'm probably doing this wrong. And that's, I always want that to be the thing, whether it's a fun, big rock song or, you know, a lot of guitars, Southern rock kind of thing or if it's just an acoustic guitar if, if somebody's not feeling it i'm doing it wrong and usually that comes with me feeling it so if i'm if i'm singing a song and i and i start to get emotional i go there's no way nobody else in this room is going to feel this or not going to feel this i should say that damn yeah Man. 
perfectly said. Love that. Holy <laughs> smokes. So. That was beautiful. So. No, that was I'm also beautiful. having coffee. Don't think that I'm drinking on the job. This is just oh, I, lo- I love it. Sure, sure it is. <laughs> like wink, wink. Today. Yeah, no, I love it. Today. Oh, man, man. Mm. That was that was phenomenal. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks for your time. Let me ask you about a couple of questions. I mean, Slow Burn, the first single, mm-hmm. uh, just riveting. I mean, Bob Dylan, harmonica intro, man. But but the message. Oh, yeah, yeah. The message of that, like, you know, fading yeah. relationship and, and that anger, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, how are you able to tap into that? And, like, why do you think it's so hard to, like, cleanly finish these relationships? Um, I wrote that song with a friend of mine, Wes Harley. And it was interesting. Someone had asked me about this uh, maybe about a couple of weeks ago. And they said, what was, what was that experience and, and why that song? And I laughed. I said, you know, being empaths and being people who write music, we're always kind of pulling the energy from each other and pulling because that's in our nature. Yeah. And in a, in a relationship that, that failed for me, I had a lot of pent up anger that I never talked about because I just wanted to be, I wanted it to be gone. I wanted it to be over. And me and Wes got in a writing room. We had just met that day and, uh, and we both just started talking. And I think the forgotten art of songwriting is the conversation before. You know, the cup of coffee, the, Hey, who are you? And you just kind of like dig in. Yeah. And that's what we did that day. And it showed because we both realized we both had fa- failed relationships that um, we were angry about, Yeah. you know, and we didn't have a way to say it. And we didn't allow ourselves to do it. And we were sitting there having coffee and one of us uh, in conversation, I honestly don't remember who it was, but we were both, one of us had said, you know, letting go of these things is just the, is the slowest burn you can have. It's just, it never fades. It's always kind of lingering there. And, uh, and it's funny because, you know, it's obviously a song title of a, such a popular song from Casey Musgraves, but it was, we had no other way to say it. We, just, <laughs> we didn't know another way that we could really express the phrase other than in that. Yeah, she didn't trade it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but I said, if we're going to write the same title, we better write a damn good song. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was it was really tough, but there was a safety in number, right? Like yeah. um, writing that song made me realize one thing, and it's the fact that none of us ever. I'm not the first person to go through something like that, and I'm definitely not going to be the last. But it's my job to make sure that everybody feels a safety in knowing somebody else has. Yeah, right. And I think that's the, that's the best part about writing songs for us for anybody is that you get to give out a message. And I, I might sound a little, it might sound a little hippy dippy to say it, but like you get to give out a message to people who are going to feel the same thing, just don't have the words. So if I can find a way to craft that into a phrase and say, hey, you might be feeling this as well. This is a way to say it. And they go, oh, that's right. You know, and that's always what, you know, my favorite songs were people saying something. And I went, man, I just, John Mayer always knew how to do it. Every record yeah. that came out and I would go, how did he know this was what I felt three months ago? And he wrote this song four years ago. Mm. That was always what was brilliant. So I think with that song, it was, um, it was just being really bluntly honest. There's a lot of just visceral images. Yeah. And I said, if we're, if we're going to say it, let's say it honestly and make sure exactly. that we're saying it the right way. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, man. And, you know, let me leave you with this one. I mean, live a little because the whole album is not just a crushing disappointment of heartbreak. There's like also lights and it's a beautiful thing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I mean, people love that stuff. I mean, we all connect. But, you know, live a little is a beautiful love song. I think it's full of hope and light and, you know, the beautiful Mm -hmm. chorus. I'll make sure the light stays on. I mean, it's just classic Mm -hmm. line after classic line. And I guess the question is, Matt, as Mm -hmm. we wrap this up is when you're like in the zone in both Mm -hmm. heartbreak songs and in love songs, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm not a songwriter, but I'm fascinated with the process. Yeah. Which one is more fun? Like, with all things equal, you're in the zone. You're in the zone for both. In one of them, you're anger, and in the other uh, one, you're just, like, joyous. Which one do you enjoy the most? That's tough. I think the easier to write are the heartbreak songs, right? That's why the blues is the blues. It's because it was just, it's always, there's always heartbreak to be told. I think, uh, I think in the musical profession, we're just inherently selfish people. Uh, and, you know, so you wind up having more heartbreak songs than you do love songs. Totally. Um, one of my favorite love songs of all time is, is uh, Whenever You Come Around. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, stunning, stunning tune. Is it? 
I can't say one or the other is my favorite. It's whichever at the time. I, well, I'll say this. You need both, right? right? I realized for me, I love them both equally because I need both of them, mm-hmm. right? I think that if I don't have both, I just start running myself. I, I run the well dry. You know, yeah. there's the yin and the yang to it. You need to feel this to let this go down and feel sure. this one to let this one go down. Um, I, I'd say the the heartbreak songs are easier just because emotion kind of pours out heavy. Um, the love songs, you really need to, or at least the hopeful songs, you really need to sit. And they, they, they take a little more craft for me. Take yeah. a little more time and a little more like, what are you trying to say? And how, instead of just coming out and having this like big aha moment, how can you craft this to be like, man, I need to say this articulately or with articulation and, uh, and, and really make it make sense. Yeah. And um, so I, I, you know, obviously I need both. I think the heartbreak ones are probably easier. <laughs> you know, yeah. I've just gotten more used to writing those, I guess. That's a, <laughs> yeah. That's don't, don't have any pity. Don't have any pity <laughs> on that, that statement. But I think, you know, I've just gotten very, I've gotten very good at writing those. Unbelievable. Well, yeah. Matt, because you you have said it all for today, my friend. Wild man. Horse, April 22nd, man. What a, what a gem. Holy smokes. Oh, what a gem, you, brother. I Congratulations, appreciate it. man. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Until and we I, meet again, Matt. I appreciate Matt. you taking time. Good to see you. All right. Have a good one.